Hi everyone, um, welcome back to Unation Tries. My name is Danielle. Today we are here at Tampa Bees um, and I'm going to attempt to be a beekeeper for the day. And now I'm going to hand it over to Stephanie and she's going to tell us a little more about what she does here at Tampa Bees. I'm a beekeeper. I've been a beekeeper for about nine years. Um, before that, um, my husband and I traveled with the military, so we were active duty for 22 years. Florida was our last place. We decided this is a good place to retire, and after that we were sort of looking for our next venture, and we sort of fell into beekeeping, and we love it. Today I'm going to show them what I do on a daily basis, how I check the hive, kind of a little bit about the honeybee and the pollination process and just touch on how we process honey. I hope I don't pull the microphone out. <laughs> yeah. Lots of balance here. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So <laughs> now you zip up your leg and they can't crawl up your leg. Yeah. <laughs> I should have brought a hair tie. It was bad thinking on my part. I feel like I'm in a space suit, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> Feeling great. Feeling confident. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna light the smoker now. The reason we do that is because we all give off pheromones, the bees and the people. If you're nervous, then you're giving off that pheromone and you hear people that are scared of bees and they tend to get stung more. It's because they're scared of the bees that they get stung more. So, okay, um, I didn't know that. <laughs> they can smell fear. Oh, so <laughs> if you don't light a smoker, then they're very angry because you're actually you know, attacking them. You're getting into their house and opening it up. You're letting out the warm air that they have for the babies and it's just making it an uncomfortable environment for them. And it goes up pretty quick. If you've ever seen a Christmas tree burn, it goes up really fast. And I just keep pumping the billows. If you want, you can squeeze this for me. Yep, perfect. So you get a hive tool and I get a hive tool. I'll put my head up now and we'll go see the bees. I don't really need that. So she's smoking the entrance of the hive to calm them down. The smoke goes in. There's a bit of a sound to open it. So now you can smoke again a little bit. So if they were mad at us, they would have their butts up in the air and they would be giving off that pheromone. So they're, they seem really chill, so we're good. Good news for me. Yes. <laughs> so now you can grab, we call those the ears of the frame. You can grab the ears and go up nice and slow. Yep, there you go. Got our first frame. Some people say that honey is bee vomit. That's not correct because they have two stomachs, so they're not vomiting up their actual stomach contents. They have a sharing stomach that they gather food and put it into. So they spit that back out when they get home, either to another bee or to the queen. Did you see the shiny stuff? That's all nectar. So oh, okay. they have, they're finding food somewhere and that will become honey. It's not honey yet, it's too um, high in moisture. Um, honey needs to be 18% humidity or less for them to cap it over. I've never been this close to a bee before. Yes. So they make all that wax um, from, a, from a, a gland on the underside of their body. So when they get older, they can't, so then they become foragers. So their jobs change as they progress through their life. Are there any like, common misconceptions about bees that you hear a lot about? That beekeepers should work for free to get bees because bees are in danger. As I don't mm. know anybody who will do a job for free. Yeah. <laughs> So why do you think, you know, this very difficult, important job, we're going to go save your bees for free? So you can see kind of how it makes them kind of go down into yeah, the hive. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a little one right there. I don't want to Okay. with the... There we go. This little guy's camped out on my leg. <clears throat> oh, yeah. <laughs> More food. That's a lot of pollen. You can see all the orange oh, yeah. and yellow. Those are all the different colors they're bringing. So they're just like us, they need all three forms of, of um, macros. They need the carb, the protein, and the fat. Mm -hmm. So the pollen is the protein and fat, and the nectar and honey are the carb sources. Honey is the only food that we have that will sustain life, because it has all three parts in it. And it's the only insect that makes food for humans to eat. Bees are covered with, with hair and that helps them to get the pollen because they don't actually just go and scoop it. What happens is when they're on the flower looking for the nectar, the pollen gets on them because their hairs are magnetic and it attracts the pollen. Mm -hmm. So it sticks to all over their body. And so all they have to do is clean themselves off and they push it back to their pollen baskets. Um, this is a male bee right here, this is a drone. 
He's much, there's another one, much bigger. They have like a hairy square butt mm -hmm. and the queen, a lot of people get the drones confused with the queens, but the queen has a long pointy butt. I know that the bee relocation stuff is really popular on the internet, like on TikTok and YouTube and stuff. Do you do any of that or if there's I do. bee infestations? So cool. I, right now, this week I got five calls from people who wow. have bees um, somewhere they're not supposed to be. Sometimes I'll farm it out to somebody I know mm -hmm. and other times I'll go ahead and take it if I, if I can do it. Some of them get quite complicated. You have to rent like a bucket lift and stuff. So I'm not a super fan of those, but I will do them for the right price. And what exactly is the queen bee's job? I'm not very educated on bees. So. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> she just lays eggs okay. all day and then she rests at night. Gotcha. Um, and she can lay hundreds of eggs a day. And she really builds up in the spring to get ready for what's called their, their swarm um, that's part of their, their um, reproductive cycle is to swarm. So it's, it's natural response for them. So as a beekeeper, we don't want to lose our bees. So you have to do prevention. You have to split them in two. So you take her away with a lot of her bees and make another hive. And that's how you end up with a hundred hives like I have. <laughs> <laughs> so we just finished up hanging out with the bees. Um, it was pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, obviously being around a lot of bees can be kind of scary, seem kind of intimidating, but it was a really easy process. Not scary at all in my opinion. Um, and it was really cool getting to learn more about what you do. Thank you. You can find me on Instagram. I'm Tampa underscore bees. I'm also tampabees.com and you can book me under Airbnb. I'm Be a Beekeeper for a Day Experiences page. If you're looking for my honey, I've got it out here in Odessa at the Keystone Farmer's Market, Keystone Corner, and then in Tampa, I've got a few locations. Um, Swan Avenue Market, um, Sal's Bodega, Jet City Espresso, and then if you drink any tea Bella tea, that's my honey. She buys my honey oh, okay. to put in their tea, so. Very cool. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah. <laughs>